Yesterday on March 11th, 2021, President Joe Biden signed into law the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. This is the third round of stimulus checks going out to the American people. And many of you wonder what the differences are between this round and the previous two rounds. So I'm going to answer all your questions here in this video. Hi, my name is Steve Hunt. I'm a certified public accountant and I'm the consultant for prosperity and adventure. I'm also the owner of collegetaxrefunds.com where we help recent college students and their parents and families claim thousands of dollars that they missed on their old tax returns that they don't even realize they missed. So if you've got a recent college student in your family, have them check out collegetaxrefunds.com to see if they can get any more money back on old taxes. So today I want to talk about the third round of stimulus checks, the $1,400 stimulus checks that you've heard about, and it, do a full comparison um, of the three rounds of stimulus checks to answer all your questions about what's different this time around. Now, I've done other videos about the previous two uh, stimulus checks, so please check out those videos here on my College Tax Refunds YouTube channel. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Please like this video, share it with others, and please go ahead and comment and ask your questions below. Um, I would love it if you would ask questions uh, about other things that you want videos about going forward. So once again, I want to talk today about these $1,400 stimulus checks and give you some idea about what's different this round compared to the previous two rounds. Now, in order to do this comparison, I'm borrowing this table from CNET.com. They have a, a web page that is uh, every way that the new $1,400 stimulus check compares to the $600 and the $1,200 stimulus checks. So go ahead and check out their website and uh, I'm going to thank them right now for um, using this table here to explain all of the differences. So you'll notice that, of course, the, the first big difference is the amount. You get $1,400 this time. And in round one, the amount for an adult was $1,200. And in round two, the amount for an adult was $600. For children, in round one, each dependent child uh, was entitled to $500. Well, the taxpayer who claimed that dependent child got $500 per dependent child. And in round two, you got $600 per dependent child. For both of those rounds, a dependent child was only up until 16 years old. So if you had a dependent child who was 17, 18, or 19, or even one who was older than that who was in college, and you claimed them as your dependent on your taxes, you didn't get the $500 or the $600 for those older dependent children in rounds one and two. This time, children also get $1,400, or at least, again, the taxpayer claiming those dependent children gets $1,400, and you get it for every one of your dependents, regardless of their age or whether they're students or not. If you claim them as a dependent on your 2021 tax return, you are entitled to this $1,400 for yourself, for your spouse if you're married filing jointly, and for each one of the dependents you claim on your tax return. So in the first round, a family of four with two uh, parents filing jointly and two dependents under the age of 17, so 16 or lower, was entitled to $3,400. In the second round, a family of four with those two dependents under the age of, well, 16 or younger, got $2,400. And this time, the family of four with the two dependents, regardless of their age, is entitled to $5,600. So, once again, one big difference, especially for those uh, college students, as I've encouraged college students to check out collegetaxrefunds.com, those who were claimed as dependents on their parents' taxes were not entitled, if you were claimed as a dependent on your parents' 2020 taxes, you were not entitled to any stimulus check for the first two rounds. But this round, for the $1,400, the college students who are claimed as dependents will in fact be getting, well, their parents will be getting the $1,400 for those college students. Now, I pointed out in a previous video that if you're a college student, uh, you might talk to your parents and especially to your CPA about whether or not you are eligible for your 2020 taxes to claim yourself to file your own tax return. And in that case, you would then be retroactively entitled if you filed a 2020 tax return claiming yourself, you'd be entitled to the first two stimulus checks. That's the um, $1,200 one and the $600 one. And then also, of course, you'll still get the $1,400 one. All right. Uh, the income limits for the three stimulus packages are, well, they, 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 you get the full stimulus check at the same point for all three stimulus packages. Let me explain a little bit further. Any single taxpayer 
filing singly, gets the full stimulus check for themselves and their dependents. Excuse me, uh, I guess they would be head of household if they have dependents. So for themselves, if they had $75,000 of income or below, that's the full amount. Then above that $75,000, it phases out. We'll get to the phase out in a second. That's the same for all three checks. Also, if you're head of household, meaning you're single and you have dependents, then the income limit for the full stimulus check for all three stimulus packages was $112,500. And if you are married filing jointly, then the full stimulus amount for all three stimulus packages came to you if your income was $150,000 or less. Now, if you had above those numbers, there was a phase out range and that phase out range was different for the three stimulus checks. For the original stimulus check, that phase out for a single uh, taxpayer phased out over the next $25,000, went all the way up to $100,000. So if your income was below $100,000, you got some of the stimulus check. And this was based on the income from your uh, 20, it was originally sent out based on the income from your 2019 taxes, but the actual amount you're entitled to is based on your income on your 2020 taxes. So if you didn't get the full amount of the steam, the first two stimulus checks, because your 2019 income was high, but then you file a 2020 tax return and your income is lower than these limits and you should have gotten more, then when you file your 2020 tax return, you will be entitled to receive the rest of whatever you are entitled to for those first two stimulus checks. So this is actually based on your 2020 income, but they were originally sent out based on your 2019 income. Again, the, the upper limit for single was 100,000 in the first round, 87,000 in the second round, and now it's all the way down to 80,000 for this third round. So um, they're not sending out this third round of checks to as many people. And for head of household, that limit was 146,000 in the first round, 124,500 in the second round, and 120,000 in the third round. For those filing jointly, that upper limit where you lost the entire uh, stimulus um, check was $198,000 in the first round, $174,000 in the second round, and $160,000 now a little bit lower in the third round. If your income is above $160,000 and you're filing jointly, and this now is for your 2021 tax return, then you will not be eligible for the entire check. So once again, one of the differences is that these first two stimulus checks that went out in, the first one went out in kind of the summer, fall, of uh, tw last year, and the second one went out in the winter of last year and maybe a little bit early this year, those were based on your 2020 tax return numbers, but they were sent out based on what the government knew from your 2019 taxes. So um, if you didn't get as much as you were entitled to, you'll get it when you file your 2020 taxes. But then this last round, this new round, is going to be based on your 2021 taxes, which you won't file for another year now, but they're going to use whatever tax return they have, which if you've already filed for 2020, they'll use that one. If you, last time you filed was 2019, they'll use that one. And they will send out this third round of stimulus check. And if you don't get how much you're entitled to, you'll get it next year when you file your 2021 taxes. All right, we're gonna talk about citizenship for a second here. Um, for the first uh, two rounds of the stimulus package, Anybody who was a citizen of the United States or any non-citizens who had a social security number were entitled to receive the stimulus checks. This round, it's a little bit more inclusive. Um, so in the, in the previous round, if you had, if you were uh, married to someone who did not have a social security number, no one in your family got the checks. In this third round, if you are married to someone who doesn't have a social security number, that's okay. You can still get your check. The person who doesn't have a social security number just won't get theirs. So that's one of the differences this time. Uh, of course, they were approved on different dates. The payments were sent out on different dates. The payments for the first two rounds should all be over now. They ended in the mid-February uh, this year. And of course, this new round is just beginning and they will be sent out as early as tomorrow, March 13th and go through the rest of this year. 
Um, the number or the amount of checks that go out to people, uh, they, of course, because the income limits were, lo were um, much higher in the first round, 160 million checks approximately went out to Americans. In the second round, those li limits were dropped, and so a few people didn't get the second round. Only 147 million went out, and of course, it's to be determined how many uh, checks will go out for the third round, and then the total dollar amount is different too. So in short, the major differences between the three different rounds um, are that this round, the, there's much more money going out to the people who get checks. It's $1,400 per adult, $1,400 per dependent child, and that dependent child can be any age. In the previous two rounds, it was $1,200 or $600 per adult, and then only $500 or $600 per child. But if your child was, dependent child was 17 up through a college age, those dependent children didn't get any money at all. So that's the major difference. The income levels are approximately the same as before, but the phase outs um, are lower. So that if you're above the base income level, you're not going to get as much this time around. But once again, when you file your 2021 taxes, if it turns out your income was lower, then you can get the rest of the money that you missed. Now, I also want to talk briefly about um, a few other things that they crammed into the uh, American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. I just want to point out some of the exciting things just briefly mention them in this video and encourage you to subscribe and watch for future videos where I'll talk a little bit more in depth about the many other things that were part of the American Rescue Plan Act. So let me show you the act right now and kind of go over um, a few of the things in this act. This is a very long act um, and uh, so just scrolling down, I am not going to read all of this stuff. I just want to point out a few of the items here. For example, they, they've crammed in here some extra money for the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP. This is also known as food stamps. So people out there um, who have been relying on food stamp assistance, there is more money going to the states to help with that. And so it is possible that you may see a bump up in your food stamps or your SNAP benefits in the next couple weeks or months based on this uh, Rescue Plan Act that's going out. That also happened a year ago in the original CARES Act, where they bumped up in some states uh, the amount of SNAP benefits going out to people. Also, WIC benefits, that's women, infant, and children. So those who are, again, getting food assistance uh, because they have young children are going to get potentially some extra food assistance. Or maybe uh, maybe those who are getting assistance won't get more, but more people will qualify uh, for a limited time during this pandemic because of this Rescue Plan Act. There's also going to be some higher education emergency relief fund money. A relief fund money. This is money that goes out to all the universities in order to um, help the universities uh, to help uh, students who have financial need. So last year they sent money out to these universities. Many universities distributed some of that money directly to students who had received Pell Grants or other assistance. And it looks like they're doing that again. So once again, if you qualify for Pell Grants or other assistance, um, then you may see some additional money going into your uh, financial account at your university because of this Recovery Act. Ask your financial aid office at your university for more information, but I can talk more about that later in another video, perhaps, if that's what you want. Go ahead and comment below if you want me to talk more about the SNAP or the Women, Infant, Children or the uh, Higher Education Relief Fund or anything else that I'm going over briefly right now. If you want me to make a specific video about it, let me know. So uh, there is also going to be some money going out um, once again to, to aid those um, who are helping the students so that um, more information is given to students about all of the credits and all of the things that they are eligible for, which would be a good thing in my business. I really want to make students aware that they're eligible for um, education credits uh, on old taxes that they've missed. It would be uh, great if they broadcast that a little more clearly and let students know to see if they missed tax returns, excuse me, tax refunds on their old tax returns. There's, of course, money um, crammed into this bill to fund uh, vaccine activities, distribution of vaccines, work on vaccines, uh, funding for COVID testing. So there's money out there to, uh, to um, test and trace COVID as it spreads, of course. Um, there's so many other things pra uh, crammed in here that I'm not really focusing on, but you know you can go look up House Bill uh, 1319 and uh, and see the full text. There's money here for heat assistance or energy assistance 
Once again, this is going out to the states, and so there are programs in every state helping people who have str who are struggling paying their heat, uh, their electricity, their gas bills, other utilities, their water bills. And so uh, if you are having trouble paying for some of your utilities, reach out to your state social services and see if they have some additional assistance right now. Maybe more people will qualify, and maybe those who qualify are eligible to receive more money because of this Rescue Plan Act. Also, rental assistance. If you're having trouble paying your rent, or if you have, if you're been late or past due on a rent bill, um, or otherwise, like I say, having trouble paying your utilities or something, you should reach out to your state social services and see if they have the ability to help you to pay some back rent or even to pay some rent going forward. So a little bit of rent assistance for the coming months um, because of some financial trouble you're having because of the coronavirus pandemic. So there's some money in here for those who are struggling and need some rent assistance. There's also additional money going out to the state small business um, associations. This is the SBA loans that maybe you've heard about. If you run a small business, uh, small businesses can qualify for special loans to get them started. The government wants to stimulate the economy and help these small businesses grow. So they've put more money towards the small business association SBA loans. So if you're running a small business or you've got a small business idea, reach out, talk to your banker or to um, your state small business association and see if you might qualify for one of those special loans to get your business up and running. They are also putting more money towards the very popular Paycheck Protection Program or PPP program and the um, IDLE loans. Again, these are um, economic incentive uh, loans that they're giving once again to businesses to stimulate the economy and to keep people employed. So if you operate a business, if you manage a business, if you own a business, uh, reach out to your banker, to your accountant, and ask whether you can apply for or qualify for a Paycheck Protection Program or PPP loan or an EIDL Advance, E-I-D-L Advance loan, which can include grants, and money that can be forgiven if you use it to pay your employees. Once again, they want you to keep your employees on the payroll throughout the whole coronavirus pandemic. And so if they give you these loans and you use a significant portion of them to pay your employees, then you can get that money, that debt, that loan forgiven in some cases. So check it out. Talk to your uh, accountant or your banker. There's also some money in here for uh, airports and airlines, specifically uh, for travel, the travel industry. Um, I just highlighted that because that's something near and dear to me as the consultant for prosperity and adventure. I like to work with my clients and help them get out on trips and take and, and travel. Um, it's good to hear that the travel industry is not just going to go under because everybody stopped traveling for several months and the government is giving a little bit of assistance uh, to the, the airline companies. They are extending the pandemic unemployment assistance and pandemic emergency unemployment compensation. Again, these are very popular programs. When the whole uh, pandemic uh, came crashing down all around us a year ago, so many people were out of work. Um, many, many people applied for unemployment insurance and uh, the state unemployment insurance was just not enough to cover all of the applicants and demands. And so um, they put in the CARES Act a year ago, money to help people out who needed that unemployment assistance. You might remember that there was an extra $600 per week for several months to people who were on unemployment. They've again extended and given more money to the states for unemployment. So if you're still unemployed, please reach out to your uh, unemployment office and see about whether or not you qualify for additional unemployment assistance at this time because of this new act. They have also suspended tax on a portion of the unemployment compensation that you may have received last year. This is very important because uh, many Americans received unemployment insurance last year, tens of thousands of dollars in some cases, and they didn't have tax withheld. And they're going to be surprised when they file their 2020 tax return and realize that that unemployment money was taxable. Well, in this uh, economic um, in this act right here, the the um, the <laughs> I've now forgotten the title of the act I'm talking about, um, but they put this suspension of the tax 
on the first $10,200 of unemployment insurance that you or your spouse, if you're married, received. So if you got $10,200 of unemployment in 2020 and your spouse got $10,200 of unemployment in 2020, none of that is taxable. Beyond that, it's going to increase your taxable income. And, uh, but, and if you got less than that, of course, that's not taxable either. The great thing about this is that it also doesn't bump up your gross income for purposes of determining your earned income credit or your child tax credit. So if, you're, uh, if you already filed your tax return for 2020 and your unemployment compensation was taxed or your unemployment compensation actually was so high that it bumped you out of claiming the, earn, the very valuable earned income credit, Go back to your accountant or to TurboTax or whatever you used, and you're going to have to amend in just a few weeks here. Don't do it right away. Wait just a couple of weeks for the software to be updated. But you're going to amend your 2020 taxes so that you don't have to pay tax on your unemployment compensation, and you're going to be able to hopefully claim the earned income credit if your income is, is low enough for that. Um, once again, here is the, the section of the, um, the economic response plan here that uh, gives these uh, $1,400 rebates to individuals. Here is the section that increases the child tax credit and the earned income credit um, for the next year and actually pays out some of the child tax credit in advance beginning in July through the end of the year. I'm not going to go into detail right now. You may have heard about some of this in the news, but the child tax credit is being uh, massively increased. And this is a credit given to taxpayers who have dependent children on their tax return. Uh, they've also increased the age um, that they're going to pay a child tax credit for. And this is just for this year, for 2021. The child tax credit has been increased and they will pay it out in advance to you beginning in July. You'll get a monthly check through the end of the year for a part of the child tax credit and you'll claim the rest of it on your 2021 taxes. The earned income credit has also been exp expanded a little bit to pay some extra money to people who have low enough earned income and no dependent children. Usually you only got a large earned income credit if you had dependent children and low income, but now even those people who don't have children can qualify for some earned income credit. Once again, um, talk to your accountant or, or reach out to me or, or comment below if you have any questions about those kinds of uh, provisions and if you'd like to have me talk a little bit more about them. Um, the child dependent care credit. This is the credit that you can claim if you were working and you had to pay for child care while you were working, meaning, um, you know, daycare or, or other babysitting. Previously, only if your income was very low uh, could you claim the dependent care credit and you could only claim a little bit of dependent care credit. They've really expanded it in this uh, stimulus package here. And so if your income is higher and if you had to pay a lot more for childcare, you can qualify for a larger uh, dependent care credit. Again, talk to your accountant about that one. There's lots of payroll credits to be given to bosses, to, 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 to employers who keep their employees fully employed during the pandemic. And there is the extension of a very valuable credit that I've talked about in another video called the employee retention credit. This is where the government actually gives 70% of whatever an, an employer pays to their employee up to a certain amount during the first couple quarters or, or throughout all of 2021 if an employer qualifies. This is a very valuable credit for employers who keep their employees working throughout 2021 and even throughout 2020. Talk to your accountant about that one if you own a business or manage or have employees. And then they've also expanded premium assistance. This is insurance premium assistance for people who can't afford health insurance right now. And they've allowed people with higher incomes to get the premium tax credit on their taxes, some more uh, health uh, credit assistance uh, through the Obamacare marketplace. All right, that is uh, a peek at some of the amazing provisions crammed into this third round of uh, the stimulus package. And so if you have any questions specifically about any of those provisions or you'd like me to make a special video about one of them, please comment below. Reach out to me at collegetaxrefunds.com forward slash contact. You can send me a message there and I'll email you back. And uh, yeah, please subscribe and I'll give you future videos about 
um, other tax provisions and other um, you know provisions about travel and and being as I'm the consultant for prosperity and adventure I'd like to help you reach your dreams faster thanks so much